This is Jay Randall Wilkerson, author of The Heart Failure Recovery Plan, Successful Heart Regeneration Using Metabolic Enzymes. This is part 19 of a 58-part video series. Please visit our introductory video for background. Part 19 is under Chapter 5, Enzymes and Supplements, and the subchapter is Iodine. Iodine levels in the bloodstream for someone with heart failure is critically important. It appears that there's a major iodine deficiency epidemic forming throughout the United States, similar to one a century ago. A known cause of heart failure is hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism, that is too much or too little. Proper thyroid functions depend upon having enough iodine in your diet. A century ago, iodine deficiency was common among certain regions of the United States that did not have iodine-rich foods. The FDA asked salt companies to sell packages of iodized salt in 1924. In the following years, many families cooked their foods and added iodized salt for flavoring. That corrected the iodine deficiency. Today, most Americans receive their salt and electrolytes from packaged foods that are prepared by large corporations, also fast food restaurants. The FDA never required iodized salt in prepared foods. This situation has led to widespread iodine deficiency that is starting to cause thyroid diseases as well as heart failure. Combine that with changes in wheat flour production. In the past, iodine was used to process wheat into flour and also for making bread. So deficiencies were rare until recently, in recent years, uh, wheat flour mills have switched to potassium bromate and stopped using iodine. It helps make the bread rise higher with a better appearance. It doesn't help that potassium bromate is a class 2B carcinogen. It is banned in the United Kingdom in 1990 and Canada shortly thereafter. It is still legal for sale and production in the United States. Yes, you heard me correctly. Wheat production in the United States uses a cancer-causing chemical banned in most of the modern world. The Center for Science in the Public Interest has petitioned the FDA in 1999 to ban potassium bromate. Like you, I had never heard of iodine deficiency in the modern world. Uh, a couple of years ago, my wife's doctor suspected her thyroid condition was caused by a low iodine level, so she prescribed a special iodine level blood test. It turned out her level was extremely low, so her doctor prescribed 12.5 milligram dose of Lugol solution in a 5% mixture. She told my wife that any pharmacy carries it, so I bicycled down to our local independent pharmacy to fill the prescription. They had never heard of it. <clears throat> I went down to a compounding pharmacy that mixes custom medications at the next town down. They found a bottle of Lugols on the shelf but when they went to fill the prescription, the drug formulary service computer had no instructions on how to dispense it, so they couldn't hand it over. Therefore, I logged online to find out what's going on, and I discovered that the DEA, the Drug Enforcement Agency, had applied pressure to all pharmacies in the United States to remove Lugol solution from their formulary. It has been used for making methamphetamines as a special chemical. Lugol's has been available since 1829, almost two centuries when a French doctor created it to correct iodine deficiencies. It took a while, but I managed to find some online. One company, J. Crows, provides 5% and 2% bottles. Do not use iodine antiseptics in the pharmacies because they do not have the correct formula of iodine. Lugol's contains a mixture of elemental iodine and potassium iodide. After your doctor conducts a blood test to discover your iodine levels, he can prescribe the dosage. I am currently using 2% solution with two drops in each glass of juice in the morning. Uh, that is half the strength of the 5% solution, but it makes it easier to dispense it accurately. It's possible to take this on your own without your doctor's prescription, but it's always best to have a blood test and confirm what your level is. The RDA for iodine is 150 micrograms as a minimum daily requirement, but that is not enough to correct a current deficiency level and is also known to be fairly low, uh, many doctors even preferring closer to 2 milligrams or 5 milligrams in 
some doctors as high as 50 milligrams. Iodine is excreted by the kidneys, so any excess is removed from the bloodstream, making it very difficult to overdose. That concludes this part. I'm J. Randall Wilkerson, author of The Heart Failure Recovery Plan, Successful Heart Regeneration Using Metabolic Enzymes. This book is available from Amazon in print and Kindle editions, from the Apple iTunes Store in iBooks edition, from eBay in a print edition, and directly from the publisher, Wilkerson & Hughes, P.O. Box 777, Altoona, Florida, 32702. Just send a check for $24 to cover the book and postage. Thank you for listening.